All right, well, I guess we've already kind of started, but welcome back to Unlocked. We didn't start. I walked in and got attacked immediately. No, they asked what we were going to talk about, and I said, clearly, your girlfriend, because there's been all kinds of comments of people saying, oh, yeah, but remember when Chase said he's not going to put anyone else on again? I'm not. I don't have to put her on. She's got a great job. She's doing her own thing. Well, yeah, I'm not saying that. You just said on one of the previous podcasts that you weren't going to talk about anyone else. Like that you weren't going to put it out there publicly. Savannah, I'm a hopeless romantic, so. A hopeless romantic. Yeah. Is that what I'm looking for? The word? Chase, I don't know if I would call it. You're just soft. Not soft at all. I have a big heart, but like. I can love you, but I can also. Yeah, no, you're you're definitely not a hopeless romantic. I definitely am. How do you figure? What do you mean? I love love. Chase, I love love. I love love. Maybe you should take that, and and have maybe soften up a little bit. Oh, I am happy and thriving, and I'm great. Uh, trust me, we all know that. What? Speaking that? of. Putting it on blast, sister. You put your shit on big blast. Yeah, because I had to before someone else did. That has nothing to do with you posting shit where, oh, kissing on each other and hugging on each other, hanging on each other 24-7. We're not we, hanging we, on we, each other 24-7. Oh, my God. We get it. We get it, Savannah. We get it. You have a boyfriend. Yeah. We get it. And he is fun. God. Just saying. He did. Um, and too, like, yeah. But this is not about me. This is about you. No, this, this is, is your podcast. You. Exactly. And you're coming on, so I get, this is about you now. So you have now, what, what, how do you respond to people that say, what happened to you never putting someone else on again? And you weren't going to talk about the person you were dating. I don't give a shit what they say. Okay, well then there's that. Chase clearly showed up angry today. No, why would I care what a stranger has to say? Chase, you care a lot. I literally don't care at all. Like none. I, I had my ability to care had went out the window a long time ago. <laughs> well, okay, well it's best that that is the case. If that's the case, it's best that it's that way. Yeah. I don't read comments. I don't. Maybe that's you see I I stay you up to do. date I stay up to date on everything. Is that not exhausting? No, it's called being prepared. For what? So I know what narratives are out there, what people are saying, what needs to be corrected. I know. Why do you care? Because people are gonna say what they want to say. Everybody's gonna make up their own story. Who gives a shit? I don't care about certain things. I do care when it comes to mom and dad and their case. I care tremendously about that because the truth is literally in the court documents if you go and read them. So I care about that stuff. So I well, want to be educated yeah, on that. Yeah, I mean, I care about that as well. But I mean, like, we know the truth. So I'm not about to sit here and, like, let someone that doesn't know anything about it, like, get me worked up. Ooh they don't get me worked up they just they keep me going they just keep me pushing forward because i will show up to fight we are well aware i will show up to fight so that is for sure i just don't like i'm just tired of fighting like See, I, like i'm not like i just feel like they don't deserve like my time like they don't deserve free rent in my head like you know well, of course they don't, but there's also a fine line between not caring at all and having a little care. Yeah, but I mean, like, we know the truth. We know our truth. And, like, like God's got us, so. Yeah, but also you stand up for yourself. Sven, you know I will stand up for myself. Stand up for yourself. You know I'm the... And I'm, there's a fine line with me between, all right, being the bigger person and realizing that, like, other people don't define me. And then there's sometimes where I just throw all that out the window and I'm like... Yeah, but mm. you're better than that. Like, you're, like, 
Ten, no, these are strangers. But I get to, but when the difference is, it's those are strangers. But when it gets to be a bigger thing, and there's stories being written about it, and there's lies being spread, sure, one person's comment, I don't care. But I will correct a narrative if it is attacking my character and who I am as a person. I will correct that because I know who I am and I'm not. Yeah, but you know that people want to like read negative stuff. So like, there's. You can't control the media. Like they're gonna, they're gonna put negative stuff out there. Yeah. So you know who you are. You know your truth. You know your character, your integrity. You don't owe anybody an explanation. Well, no, yeah. I don't. But also, part of fighting for you're just toxic. You I am love not. you. Oh my fucking god, Chase, you. Oh, I know. I got some toxic in me. No, too. you are very toxic. No. I used to be very toxic. I don't think I'm that toxic now. Please give me an example. Put it out there. I don't care. When it comes, first off, I how do you figure <clears throat> me being toxic showing up and fighting the way that I do? How is that being toxic? No, no, no. I'm not. I respect that. I'm just saying, like, you don't, like, you have... A, a beautiful life i don't think that you should let like these strangers and people talking shit behind a phone or a computer like they don't deserve that like that time no, in your they life don't. like they don't deserve to have any impact on your day so like whenever i see like a negative article or if like a negative article comes out I don't, i'm like oh yeah cool that's such a lie that is savannah such a name lie. one time that you that i've been like upset about an article that's come out i don't care i really don't say it chase yes you do when do you hear me bitching about it really there have been instances this episode of Unlocked is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. Yep, while you're listening to me talk, you're probably also driving, cleaning, exercising, or maybe even grocery shopping. But if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else you can be doing right now. Getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's easy, and you could save money by doing it right from your phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save nearly $750 on average, and auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year, so you're protected no matter what. Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, national average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June of 2022 and May of 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. At the end of the day, I really don't, like, I don't care. There's certain things I care about and certain things I don't. And I've reached a point to where I've realized that if you never speak up, you just, you just fade out. You just, as a person, like if you don't ever speak up for yourself, you just, it starts to dull you as a person. And there are certain things I won't speak up against because those people are just trying to get attention. And then there are other things where I'm like, no, that deserves a response. I mean... I, I mean, that's one way to look at it. I, I just, like, don't think that they deserve, like, my attention. I just don't. Well, and, but I think that I've got, like, yeah, I used to, like, 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 stuff would piss me off. But, like, I've just gotten to a point where I'm just, like, I just care too much about my peace. Well, then there's that. Then there's that. Okay, so... Does that make sense? I mean, it kind of does, but... Mm. 
I feel like like you there are times in life where you have to fight for what you believe in. You have to fight like you can't just let people create their own narratives and say what they want to say. But they're gonna do that they're back. gonna do that regardless. We just have very different personalities. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And I will like I will stand up for what I believe in and, and but like I just don't think that someone that doesn't even know me, like their opinion just doesn't matter to me. Well, all right to each their own that's fine too and that's that's exhausting like like continuously fighting a stranger who well, does not know you that's true that's true but again whatever we'll move on from that so holidays holidays yeah how you feeling um honestly yeah i mean i'm pretty sad okay like, it's just not the same. You well, know? no, it's not the same. Like, I'm not looking forward to it. But why not try to make the most of it? Well, I am going to try to make the most of it. But, I mean, I mean, it's just not the same, you know? Well, of course it's not the same. Mom and Dad aren't here. So, you, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. But. But I am going to, I mean, I will make the most of it. I mean, I, I'm grateful to God that, like, I still have you and Grayson and Chloe. Like. Yeah. Like that is a blessing. So I mean, yeah, I'm gonna we'll make we will make the most out of it. And yeah, but I mean, yeah, it it does suck. Well, yeah, it sucks. And I'm like, trust me, there are moments where I'm sad and I like get down the dumps. But I'm also like reaching a point to where it's been a year almost, which and, is like, crazy. Everybody's got to get out of this, step out of this depression mindset. Yeah, I'm not depressed by any means, but I mean, like you asked the holidays, like it still sucks. Well, it sucks. Yeah. But you got to be of the mindset of like, all right, this is our situation. It sucks, but let's keep moving forward. Yeah. Well, we have no choice but to move forward. But yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, you know how special holidays were and this is our first holiday. Yeah. So. It is. I think getting Thanksgiving out of the way made it easier. Yeah, especially when you're in Turks. Yeah, it was great. I had a blast. We had a blast. And too, we were in another country, so it wasn't as big of a deal. Yeah, it's a lot easier to, to get through it when you walk out your back door and you're in the ocean. Yeah, 100%, without a doubt. No, it was, oh, it was great. Also, too, can you believe that I saw it on the news that a man won the 10 million dollar lottery jackpot for the second time that shit's rigged i'm so pissed the second I, I, time savannah i buy a lottery ticket every day and i have every time i buy it, i'm convinced that i'm gonna win okay well you and have i terrible never luck. win you have terrible luck and dude how can is... you say that i have terrible luck what about uh palm springs okay well rarely do you ever get good luck it's rare I'm gonna pull your thing back to you, Mike. Oh, the mic. Also, this man, he won the $10 million prize this month in, in the New York lottery just 16 months after he won the same amount. It's rigged. 100%. It's rigged. That's wild. It's 100% rigged. I If I haven't won it by now with as much money as I've spent on lottery tickets, it's 100% rigged. That is wild. That's... I just cannot... That's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah, it's bullshit. Unbelievable. That's okay. That's but I think I'm gonna start an OnlyFans. Chase, shut up with this OnlyFans stuff. No, I'm dead serious. Like, come like on, you think do something like I'm gonna productive. Get, I'm don't gonna do, get, you don't need OnlyFans. Productive, yeah. Savannah. Do you oh. understand how much money people are making on there? So what? Like people are making like millions of dollars a month. I'm getting so antsy. Yeah, what's you good? No, I'm just like you coming like, off I need something. To run a I like need to run a marathon. Yeah, I would pay to see that. You can't run. No, I don't run. Running is like not my thing. Cardio, no thanks. Try again. I love it. Yeah, I don't. You should try it sometime then, if you love it so much. Don't come at me, bitch. I have lost 
almost 20 pounds first off you're the one saying that i just said you, you, should, should, try you should try it, it. You should try, no you were taking a dig i no, know you. i was not okay since when do you ever work out i'm telling you the new year starts my sauna is gonna be here and i've got to get back in a routine because mentally it, if i'm not it well good for me. you i'm happy that you love that i hate it i hate working out the <laughs> shit is miserable but and mentally, people that people that genuinely enjoy that there's something not right up here because that shit sucks chase mentally when you get it sucks when you first start but when you get in a routine mentally like back when i was on my schedule i had never been better yeah well i hate it and now i just I feel went, like my brain's like scrambled eggs i went to the gym with grayson and i literally could not even sit down and take a shit so like that's miserable <laughs> And it's it's great. I'm gonna get back to at the first of the year. My New Year's resolution is going to be be in the gym, do cardio, because my weight and too my weight is always fluctuated. It's just gone up and down, up and down. Savannah, your weight does not fluctuate. You look the same all the time. What are you talking about? I think you look the same all the time. Okay, well I don't, I don't. I'm dead serious about the OnlyFans. What? Why don't you do it? I have enough self-respect to not. Please. Savannah, if you 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 would probably make like two million dollars a month. No joke. Like Okay. And do do you think I want when I have kids, do you think I want them to be sitting at a lunch table and my boys' friends be like, hey, look at this picture of your mom? No, I'm good. Okay. I'm well, good. To each their own. I'm good. I will shake some ass for two million a month. Okay. Well, I you wouldn't be getting paid that, buddy. Again, I don't even know why I come on here. I really don't. <laughs> no. I just get I just get sh shit no. on every time. You're I talking come on. about OnlyFans. I yeah, I will do it. Okay. Well, you need to go to therapy. No, I don't. Yeah, you could benefit. I'm good. Okay, well, to each their own. I think, fine. Savannah, whatever. Hey, well, what's going on in life? Tell people something good. Something good? Yeah. I got nothing. What? <laughs> what do you mean? Nothing good has happened re recently. Nothing bad's happened, but it's kind of just even right now. Something good had to have happened. I mean, other than my relationship... I mean, that's been good. It's going good. But other than that, oh, I mean, we got our oral arguments, which is huge. Well, yeah, that's huge. That's a, that's great news. So that's in March, which is hopefully wild. justice will finally be done. Yeah. But you know, we don't know. So like when the oral arguments are had, it could take them. Like three months, right? Three months to write up their reviews it could take a year but they make their decision that day no yeah they do no. that's what alex said no alex said to, what exactly did he say he said that they will make their decision that day no and but they as far as whenever they like let us know like that could take time but they will vote on it that day yeah <clears throat> well and they but they also have to write up their reviews they have to so it's just, just because they make a decision, we may not know about it. And it could take a month, three months, a year. We don't know. A year? Yeah. We Alex and I just had the conversation yesterday. Yeah. So it could take time. But meanwhile, with how our system works, we just continue pushing forward. We continue exposing all the corrupt things that are occurring, how people are being treated. And we're not going to stop. No, we're not going to stop because I literally am sitting on a recording right now that I'm going to be posting that talk, that's has a correctional officer telling another correctional officer to just stiff arm him in the side so that he can set, set him up. so that he can set an inmate up. So it's like there's all these things that are occurring that are happening and we're going to continue to stand for it, whether mom and dad are in there or they're home, because that's why God allows things to happen. A hundred percent. And there was, when I was at this conference, there's a guy that I met, his name's Tim Story, and he is like just amazing. And we're supposed to be talking this weekend 
but just a great relationship to have a great person. I was listening on my flight home to a sermon that he had preached and he said, God will call you to an upward calling in a downward time. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. So in the midst of all your trials, tribulations, the tough things that are happening, that's your opportunity to show up. That's your opportunity to show up, to be better, to do better. And God's calling you to something bigger than your situation. Yeah. And so that's why when people say, oh, you only care about this because your parents. That's why I began to care about it. Of course. Well, yeah. Because but, of mom but, and dad. And, and it's like <clears throat> people will come at us and say that we didn't know anything about it. Like we didn't have any experience with it. Yeah. We'd never been, we'd never been Exposed. subjected to it. Like, so of course that this is, that's why we know about it. And yeah, we are fighting for our parents, but that's not the only reason now. Like we, I mean, you know how many people we've talked to yeah, like that have went through it and were mistreated. Like, so it's not just for our parents. It's, for everybody oh for sure without a doubt and so that's what i feel like during your tough if anyone's going through anything tough in life right now all that i can say is keep pushing forward because for me but that's so much that's easier said than done well of course it is but for me it's been the only thing that saved me is to keep pushing forward to keep setting goals but to not be so focused on the end goal set little goals for yourself like little, I'm going to get up today and I'm going to go to the gym or I'm going to get up today and I'm going <clears> to <throat> write this letter or I'm set very realistic, attainable goals for yourself that will help you get to that end goal. Yeah. And that's, that's literally the only way I've been able to keep pushing forward is to do that and to know that there are people relying on you. There's all these different things and there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Like there's little wins that come and you just and you have, have to, to celebrate them yeah you have to celebrate the little wins because if you don't then you're just going to be miserable forever yeah well i can tell you this like throughout this entire thing like i am extremely proud of you well thank you like ser no seriously like you like the strength that you have like had and like shown and like the example that you've set for Grayson and Chloe, like it's very admirable. And like, I could not be more proud of you. Well, thank like, you. and just like, it, it, it really is like, it, it's, it's outstanding. Well, thank you. No, I mean, it's tough, but at the end of the day, you have to look at it and life, but you have, than not. you have shown throughout this whole thing. You are that bitch. <laughs> Well, that is true. That is true. Because it, I'm just not going to back down. I'm just not. At the end of the day, I'm going to stand for what's right. I will lose fans along the way. I will lose friends along the way. I will lose people. And that's fine. Because in my viewpoint, it, my viewpoint is, is that <coughs> really standing up for what's right is hard. Yeah. Like it's almost impossible. And a lot of people, it's hard to find the courage to do so because you're afraid of what you're going to lose. And guess what? I know I can sleep better at night because I'm standing up for what's right. Mm -hmm. And like I've said, going out here, working, doing whatever, people look at us and they're like, oh, like, must be hard. All these things. Yeah. Like any other normal person that has to get up, put food on the table. And today's economy that has to put a roof over your head, car insurance, health insurance, all these things, it's tough. It's tough for anyone. Mm -hmm. And so we're no better than anyone else to have to go out here and work and to provide. And I'm very open about it of like, yeah, it sucks. There's times where it's like, ah, this isn't fun, but you do it. Yeah. You figure it out. Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane. Perfect timing, honestly, because the new year is here and my wardrobe could definitely use a refresh. In case you didn't know, Jenny Kane is a California brand through and through. They also have a store here in Nashville and I am obsessed. I always see all my friends going, tagging them in photos. It's pretty awesome. All of their clothes are absolutely amazing. They have their staples, which make getting dressed easier than it's ever been before 
before and just think minimalist and effortless but totally refined from luxurious cashmere sweaters and iconic accessories to elevated versions of all of your everyday basics not to mention the most incredible home essentials too jenny kane is here to help you live your best year yet in any season, but this one especially, their sweaters are the it item. I'm obsessed with the Flynn cashmere sweater. It's the perfect everyday V-neck, and the cashmere turtleneck is such a solid staple piece for the season. Y'all know me. You know I love a good turtleneck. I have a great offer for you. Jenny Kane has given my listeners 15% off your first order. All you have to do is go to JennyKane.com and use the code UNLOCKED to get 15% off. Off. That's Jenny Kane, J E N N I K A Y N E dot com, and use the code unlocked for 15% off. This episode of Unlocked is brought to you by BetterHelp. I don't know about you guys, but life kind of sucks sometimes. I like to tell people, come to my podcast and you will just see me as I am that day. I try to be happy go lucky, but sometimes life just gets freaking tough. And that's where BetterHelp has come into play. I've spoken about them tons of times before. I am a huge advocate for therapy and for getting the help that we all deserve. Let's face it, holidays, for me, they were tough. I needed a little extra help in just getting through. And that's okay. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to just show up as you are. And it's okay if you're having a bad day to say, my day sucks and I need someone to listen to me or I need to talk about the things that I'm going through. So, I don't know if you're like me and life's just in a lull right now, or even if life's great and you need someone to help you decipher your feelings, BetterHelp is the way to go. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress that you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com com slash savannah today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash savannah, S-A-V-A-N-N-A-H. It's tough, but also with Chloe and Grayson, what you realize is as adults, whether you have kids or you don't have kids, I still feel like it's our responsibility. Like kids are what you leave behind. So what you teach them, what they see, what they grow up with, like they are what you leave behind. That's going to be the next generation. The youth creates change. Mm -hmm. That's where it all comes from. So when people realize that, I feel like more people will be mindful of how they act, things they say, what they're teaching each other, all these different things. And it's just more people should be mindful of it. Do you have Robert in your phone as daddy? <laughs> it's a joke. What it's in the It's a joke. You, did you think I wasn't? Let me see that. Let no. me see. No, no. Stop. No, we can't. We got to get this over no, with. We, we are have do, a meeting. We Stop. are doing this, Stop. Savannah. No. Um. Daddy. No. So when it's a joke, first off, it says Robert... I just saw daddy. It says Robert Daddy Shiver. Okay. And it's a joke because the first time he said that when he met dad, there's this thing that was like trending on Instagram. Oh, yeah. And it said, Hey, sir, I, I, uh, we share the same name. Yeah. She calls me daddy too. Yeah. <laughs> and so he said when he meets he dad, he should the not first do time, that. He should not do that. I think it would dad's going to be fresh out, fresh out the pen. He's, <laughs> you should not, he should not say that. I I think it would be hysterical but it's an inside joke i'm not one of those females it's like oh daddy i mean teach their own whatever Savannah, works for you, you but that you, doesn't work for me yeah you definitely call him daddy yeah no i definitely do not that makes me want to puke um it made it i'm physically ill seeing that on your phone <laughs> it's a joke it's a joke it's an inside joke there's no seriousness to it okay sure oh my gosh go away so yeah but Hey, I love my life. I mean, other than like mom and dad not being here, of course it sucks, but like you got to find joy. You got to find laughter. You I bet to. you do love your life, Savannah. You've been jet setting and. Yeah, no, life's good other than mom and dad. Like I want them home, but you can't fight effectively for them if you're just down in the dumps about it. No, for sure. 
Like you got to be find a fight, find energy, do whatever it is and be like, all right, this is what's going to happen. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm ready to go. Like <laughs> I like I'm if I when the time comes and I need to fight, you know, I will fight. Yeah, but you have to fight effectively. For sure. I agree. Yeah. So that's but, what we're doing. Also, in March are the oral arguments. So the week of March 25th are oral arguments. And it is open court. Yeah. So anyone can show up. I you want can. I want everyone to show up. If you support us and support our family, yeah. show up. Hey, free the Chrisleys. Free the Chrisleys. That can be like a movement going on. If someone wants to start it, feel free. Have people sign up. Send out updates. Do whatever you want to do. Because it is an open court. Anyone can show up. You can fill up that courtroom. You can be outside the courthouse. And if you can't be there, I'm almost positive there will be like a live or not live, but there will be audio from the hearing, maybe the day after court that will come out. So there are all these different things. Um, It'll be interesting to see if they try to block the audio or if they allow the audio to happen. I'm sure they'll block it. If they try to block it or they close the courtroom, I will not be happy about that just because I feel like we're begging for full transparency. You you know that they're going to block it because, I mean, the lead prosecutor was reassigned and taken off the case well no he wasn't reassigned he's just left he's left the u.s attorney's office and they moved him to the fdic well it's two completely different we don't know what happened we don't know what happened we just know the lead prosecutor is no longer on the case anymore and the government has yet to give us any answers as to why that has occurred Mm -hmm. we had stated that we had claimed brought to the court that there were Brady violations against the prosecutors, which state that they withheld evidence that could have proved some innocence. Mm -hmm. And they knew that their witness was lying and they continued to allow her to lie on the stand. And after we make these claims of misconduct, he's no longer at the U S attorney's office and is no longer on our case. So why is that? We want answers, which we have not gotten. And we hope we get during the appeals process, but who knows if we'll ever get that. And that's the sad part is how, corrupt our government can be and that's not to say that everyone's corrupt Mm -hmm. at all like that because there are there are a lot of dirty bitches yeah but let's there are and like the yes they had their uh irs wit or agent that lied but then also their lead witness who's a total scumbag got on the stand and said yeah sometimes i just lie to lie yeah But also, too, we have to speak about this in an educated manner and not name call and not give. We have to take our personal feelings out of it. You have to stick directly with what's in the trial transcripts and what has been presented. Yeah, but I'm petty. Yeah, but you you have to speak in a way that because people are just going to think it's biased when in reality i have said if you can prove 110 percent without a doubt that they did what you said they did. Okay. They yeah, do but, they, consequences. but they did not do that. But they didn't. And you can look, the government, they created over a 10 year period. They created a case. They created a narrative. They did what they needed to do. They wiped government devices clean of anything that had to do with the Chrisley case. They lied. They illegally obtained so-called evidence. There were so many things that occurred to where you should look at this case and you should just say, all right, I mean, this is tainted. There is one thing after another that was done that should not have been allowed to have been done. But our judge at trial just allowed all of these things to occur and happen. And there was no one was ever reprimanded other than our lawyers and the judge stating that how dare our lawyers accuse federal prosecutors of such misconduct why didn't we have a hearing why those are the things that we have brought up on appeal Mm -hmm. that hopefully these judges will listen to and hear out and i mean the fact that they've already granted an oral argument says enough yeah i mean they see that there's Mm -hmm. very credible yeah 
like what we're, we're bringing up is very credible and there's obviously something there or we wouldn't have been granted the oral arguments. Exactly. Hold on. Aaron, did you post a thing for questions or something? Let's see. Ask some, yeah. if, ask some scandalous ones. I don't yeah. give a shit. All right. What are your goals for 2024? I think just to grow as a man, to be a better, just grow and be a better man and be a better friend, be a better sibling, be a better partner, and just just be a, the, the best version of myself. Okay. All right. And get paid. Oh, my God. Okay, well, maybe work on being, like, the best version of yourself and then move on to that. What is your favorite memory with Nanny? Oh, my God. Probably in Palm Springs whenever we went on a heater. <laughs> gambling. Gambling. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. gambling. Definitely gambling. Shocker. Great grandma well, the, influence. I don't, have I told that story? What? About the Palm Springs, have I ever told that on on I here? I don't know, but don't say any dollar amount. Okay, I'm not. I won't say any dollar amount, but I didn't even know they had casinos there, and we're the landing, and Nanny looks at me and goes, "I was like, fuck, like what? Do you, what do you want to do?" She goes, "I was like, Nanny, everyone can see you. Like, what's up?" She goes. Let's go. I said, we've not even landed yet. Go where? She goes, let's go to the casino. They got two of them. I go, I just wanted to come and chill, <laughs> play some golf, <laughs> like lay by the pool. And I did not get to do any of that because Nanny had me in the casino the whole time. And I ended up going on a heater, winning. And as soon as I walked back to the Nanny's table, Nanny goes, come on. She said, Come on. I said, what? She said, toss me a chip. Oh, my God. So I toss her chip. We go fly back home. When we're landing back in Nashville, she goes, I said, there's no casinos in Nashville, Nanny. She said, you're on a heater. We need to go to, we need to, go to Indiana. Oh, my God. Landed, got in the car, went straight to Indiana, won again. And we get in the car and Nanny goes, I need a thousand dollars. I said, what? For what? She said, for gas. I said, what are we driving? A semi? <laughs> so yeah, that is our grandmother. Real God fearing lady. She got like three thousand dollars out of me. Yeah. I was like, I'm just confused. What I'm she said, Well, I need money to play. I said, You have an, a big stack of chips right there. Why do you need more? She said, well, it don't hurt. I cannot. That is insane. But yeah, I mean, I, I can't go into detail, but yeah, it was a very, that's definitely. Probably one of the best memories. It's definitely the best memory. Dear God. Because it was, it was always, a roller coaster. Yeah, she's always getting into something. Always. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, after the new is. year, after the new year, you know, come back on. We'll set our goals for the year okay i think that me and you should do another podcast 